Hi friends, welcome back to another Facebook Live. Nick and I are joining you today from our Northern Waters Gallery and today our special guest star is Aquarist Jordan and she has all sorts of goodies in front of her that we're going to talk about in just a moment. Um, but first we thought that we would continue on the theme from our last Facebook Live and that was all about enrichment. So as a reminder, enrichment is anything that we intentionally change in our animal's habitat to encourage mental or physical stimulation, and that also encourages natural behaviors that we would see in the wild. How'd I do, Jordan? Did I get that right? Perfect definition. <laughs> Perfect. Now, if you missed our last Facebook Live video all about penguin enrichment and you would like to check that out, you can visit our Facebook page and our virtual visit playlist in order to learn all about enrichment with our feathered friends. But today, Jordan is going to share a little bit about how we do enrichment in this gallery with another fan favorite, and that is our giant Pacific octopus, Tatouche. He's hiding all the way down here in the corner, Marissa. I'm sure we'll get you some nice shots there. Um, so I think without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Nick to get our questions started for Jordan this morning. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Nick. How are all of you doing today? <laughs> I will get our questions started for Jordan. Yeah, this is an exciting topic. Uh, you guys have certainly heard, uh, or seen rather, Octopus videos on our social media channels before. Uh, you've seen Jordan doing some feeding of our octopus as well. We figured we would talk to her a little bit more about enrichment, like Taylor said. So the first question that I want to ask today about enrichment is what types of enrichment do you offer for our octopus? Jordan, take it away. Sure, so we have a whole bunch of different enrichment devices that we use. You can see a few of them here. What we're looking to do mostly with octopuses is stimulate natural behaviors. So one of those natural behaviors is the stimulation of the incredibly sensitive suckers that octopuses have. So sometimes, and most of the time, we'll use food as a sort of encouragement for octopuses to engage with our different foods. Right here is an ice um, popsicle for an octopus with a nice capelin inside to promote them to, as a child would, crunch away at it and get a little treat. Another- That's a frozen fish right there. It sure Basically, is. In layman's terms, right? Just <laughs> wanna make sure everybody got that. That is a frozen fish with the tail sticking out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, another thing about octopuses is they're so incredibly smart, I'm sure you know. So some of our things are puzzle related. So we have nice little webbed balls to hide food in. We have these puzzle boxes that sometimes we'll put a nice live snack for them, like a nice Atlantic rock crab. And then sometimes we'll throw them off their, tr their um, usual uh, feeding behavior and we'll hide it inside these scallop shells so that they can, as they would in the wild, hunt for and consume some natural shellfish um, or what we can imitate here in captivity. Um, some of our devices are actually things you might see every day in the home, like this juice bottle that we've nicely drilled some holes in so that it sinks in the water and the octopuses with their incredible strength can twist it off and get whatever little treats are in there for them. So cool, Jordan. Quite a menu of different options there. Now, I know that uh, you often will work with other departments here at the aquarium in terms of brainstorming ideas for animal care, sometimes sharing techniques and things like that. Mm -hmm. Have you learned any techniques or ideas from other departments to inspire you to create a specific type of enrichment for octopus? Absolutely. So actually in the temperate gallery, we exhibit lung fishes on exhibit and we'll use these boomer balls that ha are drilled and hollow on the inside. And then the lung fishes with incredible suction power in their feeding um, behavior. Um, we'll try to do the same kind of thing with octopuses and drill these boomer balls, which are super sturdy and helpful in terms of giving them to a large, very strong octopus. And we'll make it a little game for them to get their food and enjoy it um, with a lot of um, satisfaction. <laughs> Very cool. 
think Taylor's got a question for you too. Yeah, so Jordan, my question is, what behaviors are you looking for that indicate that an enrichment session is a success? So we talked a little bit um, last month about what penguin behaviors our aquarists are looking for, but I would imagine octopus behaviors during enrichment sessions are a little bit different. Yes, it's very interesting you mentioned that because octopuses um, show a lot of their feelings out loud, we like to say. So um, we judge their skin color, their activity levels, if they're running around the tank and exploring a lot of the objects that they come to see. Um, it depends on every octopus sometimes because um, they're all different and unique in their own way. So yeah, so besides their skin color, what we like to see is a nice deep red sort of magenta color um, in their skin that indicates that they're super with it and into their enrichment session. Another thing we like to see with some enrichment devices, like our puzzle boxes, is a web over. And that is when an octopus completely surrounds um, an enrichment device, or in the wild, a crab, or whatever shellfish they're hunting at the time, and um, just investigate it for hours, getting all their suckers involved to feel and taste, and yeah. That's really cool. I just learned a new fact today. Web over, is that what that's called? Yes. That's really amazing, especially if you consider uh, what that looks like when an octopus is all spread out over an object. Um, so that's really cool. Marissa is getting you some shots of one of the enrichment toys in the exhibit. It looks like one of our sea urchins has grabbed a hold of it because Tatouche uh, wasn't super interested at the time. Um, I think that's another thing that uh, Jordan, you were telling me about before is that uh, just like all of our animals here, enrichment sessions are totally optional for the animals. They choose whether or not they want to participate. Um, that being said, how long does it typically take an octopus to learn how to use a different enrichment toy? Does it vary? Absolutely. So some enrichment an octopus right away knows what's going on like oh this is for me I'm gonna interact with this and really promote some natural behaviors there um, sometimes depending on the octopus and how much they explore um, they'll react to different enrichment tools differently for example Tatouche isn't very interested usually in aquarist interaction which is a very charismatic form of interacting with our animals and feeding them even by hand um, Tatouche kind of is an antisocial octopus, <laughs> so <laughs> it's fun to be able to offer him foods in different ways, like in our boomer balls or our little bottles here. Um, other octopuses are completely into it. They act like real sea monsters and just want to drag whatever in aquarist is feeding them at the time, <laughs> which is very fun. But yeah, yeah, we can find different ways um, to entertain different animals. A lot like you would babysit a child and pick out different games to play with them. Very cool. Does Tatouche have an enrichment toy that he tends to favor over others? We have found that he really likes um, any sort of puzzle related food. So you can see he's all set with this um, jar right now, but at first he really takes it sometimes holds on to it for more than 12 hours, just holding it and tasting all those fish oils and whatever have leaked onto the side. So yeah, that's his favorite, I'd say. That's really cool. So an, as another reminder, friends, Marissa is getting you an incredible view of Tatouche moving around the exhibit right now. And you're seeing all of these amazing suction cups. Now, Octopus not only can touch and hold on to things with those suction cups. They also smell and taste using receptors all along the surface of those suction cups. So when Jordan says that he holds on to it in order to taste it and smell the fish oils on those toys, that's exactly what she's talking about. He's using those suction cups in every way, shape and form that he can, which again is uh, the goal of our enrichment is to encourage those natural behaviors, which is very cool. Um, Nick, did you have another question for Jordan this morning? I sure did, yeah, and, and Tatouche is really showing off that bright, uh, deep, deep red coloration as well right now. Jordan, you weren't uh, around when I was eating my breakfast this morning, but I would say that I did a version of a web over <laughs> for the, the muffin that I got from Dunkin' Donuts, but that's, a, that's for a different uh, Facebook Live. Let's go back to talking about our octopus here. You've hinted on about this a couple times, 
while you've been talking about enrichment, Jordan, but I'm wondering if you can expand a little bit more on why enrichment is such an important tool for keeping an animal like an octopus healthy. Yeah, and I think you might have started to answer the question a bit yourself, Nick. Um, in order to keep our animals the healthiest and the most vibrant and really enjoying life while they're in an aquarium, we try to mimic the natural environment as much as we can. Um, it's good for their health, it's good for their well-being, and it's definitely good for the day-to-day -day life of an octopus. Jordan, from what I understand, octopus are fairly intelligent animals. Um, so what would happen if we were not providing that multi-level stimulation? It's actually really bad for their welfare, and it's something we really try to pay attention to in the aquarium industry. Um, if he weren't um, so involved and so stimulated on a daily basis, um, he can kind of get what we might refer to as a depression in octopuses where they start to um, self-harm themselves and um, yeah just trail towards an unhealthy life of an octopus and we try to prevent that as much as we can. Boy he's really cooperating for uh, Facebook Live today as well by moving around so much this is great. Yeah he is really uh, stealing the show this morning that's pretty cool so I think probably at this point it's a great time to take some questions from our viewers this morning. Um, if you haven't already put your question in the comment section, remember you can post to the comments and our lovely uh, assistant Marissa, who is doing all of this excellent filming this morning, will ask us uh, those questions. And between Jordan, Nick and I, we will do our best to answer them for you. How often do you do enrichment activities? Great question, and I will let Jordan answer that since she is our expert. <laughs> we do try to offer enrichment as much as we can, at least five or six days a week. We try to offer some form of these toys or at least an aquarist interaction. Um, because octopuses grow so fast and they um, kind of live life so fast and they're so intelligent, there really is almost no limit to how much you could enrich an octopus which is very fun. Sometimes we give them a break if they're kind of in what we call a nap mode for the day. Um, but other than that, they're really engaging and ready to interact whatever we throw at them. Awesome. Are octopuses generally social creatures? Are actually, octopuses generally social? Actually, in the wild, they actually don't interact with much of their species throughout the entirety of their lives. Um, they're what we call semelparous, which, which means that they mate once at the end of their life, and that's usually the only time that they'll interact with another octopus, um, unless they meet an octopus in the wild by chance, and then there's usually a physical altercation that it will occur. <laughs> <laughs> octopus are not good space sharers, um, which is actually why when we've had two octopus here in the past, there is a divider between the front and back of this exhibit. A lot of people miss it because um, we do a pretty good job of disguising it. But if you look along the water level at the top of the exhibit, you'll see there's a line that kind of goes halfway across the, the tank there. And that will keep our two octopus separate because they don't really enjoy being around other octopus. Um, definitely interacting with other things and other animals in their environment. Um, you'll see tattoosh kind of interacting sometimes with the uh, sea anemones or sea urchins in the, the exhibit, but not, not super interested in other, other octopus. That's a great question. Do we have other questions out there, Marissa? So how long does it take to get stuff out of the puzzle box? That's very interesting. And because octopuses each are unique in themselves and almost have a personality to them, it takes a while depending on the octopus. So sometimes we have an octopus who really is engaged with whatever enrichment process we put in and it isn't so picky and they'll know right away that there's a crab or a snack inside this box that they're going to really try to get out. Sometimes we have an octopus who's a little more antisocial, 
um, and we'll ignore that kind of treat for a little bit, maybe a few hours before eventually exploring the tank like Tatouche here and then finding again that taste with their suckers and then eventually getting to it. And sometimes they ignore it all together and then we take note and then we offer something that they are interested in. Also, Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's kind of different levels that you can build in, different levels of difficulty into the, the puzzle box. Is that correct? And if so, can you explain what I mean by that? Absolutely. So we have a few different sizes of puzzle box and a few different kinds of latches that we use to um, get them to open it. And sometimes they're locked, like this box here, and they just have to unlock and pull up. But we also have a second difficulty, um, good way to describe it, um, of a, a bigger box that we put this box inside of. So they have sort of a double puzzle to get through and um, figure out. And finally, um, get their snack. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. So do octopuses use sand or rock to hide? Do octopuses use sand or rock to hide? Absolutely. In the wild, you'll usually find octopuses in a den, which is actually a rock cave underwater that they'll usually find their best home in, feel really protected because their bodies are actually really soft, so they rely on sort of camouflaging themselves against the sea floor. Um, they'll sometimes dig in the sand too in order to create a sort of den, kind of like Tatouche has done here in the corner of our exhibit. That's awesome. Um... And I think it also probably depends on the size of the octopus. They're pretty resourceful at finding things in their habitat that they can use to hide. Um, I don't know about you, Jordan, but I've seen videos online of octopuses using things like clamshells or uh, bottle caps or anything that they can really get their hands on to hide under or around in order to help them camouflage. And, just, and right on cue, Tachi just went back into his little cozy spot in the exhibit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's kind of the idea of a really large um, octopus that you would mention in folklore hiding in a shipwreck is the same idea as them, very small, hiding in a jar. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> what a great analogy, Jordan. Because we've gotten so many good views of this how many suction cups does an octopus have? Let's test Nick. Let's see if Nick can remember. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, put me on the spot there. Well, thank, thank goodness that Jordan is here to correct me. But I, I want to I guess that maybe an adult has somewhere in the range of 300 suckers. Jordan, how, am I close? You're close. We actually estimate about 200 to 300 suckers per arm. Oh my goodness. So I multiply that, that by. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so if we multiply that by eight, we have around 1,600 to 2,000 suckers for an entire adult octopus. That's incredible. Clearly, I need to freshen my knowledge. <laughs> so close, Nick. I put you on the spot there, Nick. I apologize. Not, yeah. Do we... I think one of the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Marissa. Oh, I just said I think that's all we have right now. I was just going to say, I think one of the cool things that we've been seeing is uh, Tatouche really expanded and stretching out all of his arms. Uh, when visitors come to the aquarium and see Tatouche in person, a lot of times he might just be sitting in one of the corners, right, Jordan? And he might appear to be very small because he's sort of constricting his size. He hasn't sort of filled his body up with water and expanded completely. We got a chance to see both. We got a chance to see him sort of shrunken down in his, his little cave there in the corner, but also with all those arms stretched out wide, how big adult giant Pacific octopuses can get to. And he's actually not, not even as big as they can get, right? They can get to be bigger than he is. Much bigger, yeah. yes. It's one of the reasons we have trouble measuring his growth is because he can stretch his skin back and forth and when he's small he can shrink in and i'm sure you know nick but some of our viewers might not but they can squish into the anything the size of their beak so that's incredibly small so usually weight is the only way to measure the growth of an octopus um, because their length can sometimes be very um wishy-washy Okay, follow-up question. How do you weigh an octopus, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> well, we try to weigh our octopuses um, by scooping them with water so that they don't leave the water and because that can be kind of stressful. And we're still kind of perfecting the details because, again, it's a very 
um, strange animal, that one that we don't want to escape on us while we do a procedure. So yeah, it's, it's getting there. Work in progress. Okay, we'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> Two questions. One, is that pink red his natural color and how quickly can he change colors? Ah, great question. So is this pinkish red his natural color? And yes, absolutely. And actually, I would say that Tatouche is one of the more uh, rusty red, one of the darker octopuses that we've had um, in the past few rounds of octopus. Um, he's definitely, in, in my opinion, and Jordan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, one of, one of the darker ones that you've had. You've had a lot of like really bright red octopus more recently, but he's definitely that deeper reddish hue. And um, how fast can they change color? Well, as fast as you can blink, actually even faster than the human eye can blink. They can rapidly change color due to um, these cells of pigment or color in their skin called chromatophores and essentially what they do is rapidly expand or contract those chromatophores and based on which ones they have expanded is the color that you will see so right now Tatouche is fairly solid in color but when he was kind of down in his cave hiding he was more of a, a mottled color to kind of match the rocks in the environment and when he's really sleepy he gets pretty pale almost like a, a pinkish color um, when he's resting again kind of more mimicking the, the environment and that kind of relaxed state of his chromatophores, which again, I think is probably one of the reasons that Jordan, you guys look for that bright coloration to indicate that he is actively engaged in enrichment. Exactly, couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I think that's all we have, right? Okay, thank you guys for all the great questions. If you do think of some after we end our presentation, again, feel free to add them to our Facebook page and we'll confer with Jordan and get back to you with some answers. Thank you very much, Jordan, for showing things off today, showing off your enrichment strategies that you use to help keep Tatouche nice and healthy. Anytime at all, Nick. This is great. Thank you, Tatouche, for showing off for us, for moving around, <laughs> doing your thing. I gotta say that I definitely learned some new methods of enrichment that I hadn't seen before, Jordan. I think my favorite continues to be the puzzle box. And I think I might take it home and put my lunch in there and see if I can figure out how to get it out. <laughs> I'll let you guys know how it is. <laughs> Thank you guys for continuing to tune in while the aquarium is technically closed to visitors. Hope to be reopened very shortly so that you guys can come back in and potentially see Jordan working with Tatouche or see Tatouche using some of his different enrichment tools in the exhibit. In the meantime, continue to tune in to our social pages to learn more about what's happening here, some of the cool things that our aquarists are doing to keep our animals healthy, 365 days a year, no matter whether our doors are open to the public or not, that health care is always going on. It's obviously very important to us, part of our mission. And uh, make sure to uh, come back and visit us again soon. I'm sure that you'll see Taylor in my face, maybe even Jordan's face again soon mm -hmm. on another Facebook Live, helping to uh, teach you guys more about some of the great stuff that's happening here. Until then, take care, stay safe, and have a happy, what's today? Tuesday? Have a happy Tuesday. <laughs> Bye, friends. Bye, everyone.